coming. <laughs> Get him his coffee. <laughs> oh, God, it's gone today already. And it's so early. Well, so we're all going to have breakfast first, I think, and then we'll tell stories. Yes, then we'll talk. Oh, we'll talk during. Whatever. And during. And during. Uh, oh, thank you very much. I think the buffet is ready. Um, I think everyone should enjoy. Hate the buffet. Thank you much. Very good actor. Gary Oldman. I've admired him for years, and uh, I find him very inventive and uh, innovative, as am I. And I understand he's a fan of mine. He shows remarkable good taste, seems to be. <laughs> Walk out on a Broadway stage. Of course, that was the beginning and the end of all acting for all of us. What to do? I was dirt poor. I had one suit. And I treasured it, and I wore it only when it was important, because otherwise it would fall apart. And I picked up the New York Times one day. By the way, I warn you, I have total recall for conversations word for word. I'm not very good with dates, but I have total recall for things and people. And in the Sam Zolito column, it said that a Mr. Gilbert Miller was going to direct and produce a play called The Heart of a City. Very touching. Very t I answer them all, by the way. Oh, yes, yes. There's a place where I put them all. Takes a little time sometimes. And periodically, my old hen, with whom I've been for so many years, <laughs> says, take your pen in your hand. <laughs> and I'll knock off two or three hundred. I answer the mail. If you take the time to write to me, you'll get an answer. I'm so grateful that you're doing that, you say. I have had literally thousands upon thousands that are something so wonderful that I have kept them. Some have been the usual, please, thank you so much for the wonderful entertainment, and then that's always very nice. Uh, the handwriting, which was gorgeous. It looked like a machine had written it, and not a person. And she said, the usual thing, Mr. Harris, you're my favorite, blah, blah, blah. I'll well, please send a photograph, which I did. And I began to get regular mail from Miss Mary Miller. I always, you know, very nice, lovely, the same beautiful handwriting. And one day in the dressing room at Fox, uh, the fan person brought a batch of mail, and there were like three letters from Miss Mary Miller. So I opened the first one. Oh, Mr. Harris, the picture is just beautiful. And last week's episode was the very best one, and you're the best one, and I had it framed. Your picture's on my wall, and my friends are allowed to come in and look at it, but not to touch it. <laughs> and I said, oh, what is it? What have we here? So I opened the next one, and I very nearly sank to the floor in the same beautiful hand was a diatribe of such filth and horror that I couldn't believe my eyes. It started with you no good son of a bitch and went from there. What? <laughs> Signed, Mary <laughs> Jesus. I shook my head and I said, some sort of dream. I opened the third letter, dear Mr. Harris, you are the best actor of the world. <laughs> I said, well, this lady's rowing the boat, but not with all the oars. <laughs> so I was very daring. I'm daring. I took a chance. I looked at that address, and I said, hmm, I wonder. So I wrote a letter to the superintendent at this RFD thing in Toronto, Canada, just for kicks, and said, I have been receiving correspondence from a Miss Mary Miller. Mean anything to you, sir? <laughs> By God, back came a letter from the superintendent of the mental facility. <laughs> yes, we are aware of your correspondence with our patient, Miss Mary Miller. And we are very grateful for your interest. Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, I said, ah. I wrote back and I said, I am desirous of ceasing my correspondence with Miss Mary Miller. <laughs> However, if you feel that by so doing I would endanger her health or her condition, I would be happy to send an occasional, very brief note. Uh, please advise. Back came a letter from the superintendent saying, thank you very much for your interest. Again, feel free 
to cease your correspondence with Miss Miller, she will rant and rave for a week, but then she will quickly transfer her affections to somebody else. And again, thank you. So I wrote back and I said, I'm here by ceasing my correspondence with Miss Mary Miller, tell her to write to William Shatner. <laughs> Oh, she did. Not that he would ever answer. Somebody give him a script. Somebody gave me a script. I had a script. <laughs> Meanwhile, my head was in the world, believe me. I've never, never experienced anything like this in a long career. Never. Never. And he turned to the casting man, who was also in the office. And he said, sign him up. Don't pay him too much money. <laughs> Jesus. Then he said, I suppose you want to get billing. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was losing it, really. But I didn't. I didn't lose it. I said, Well, Mr. Allen, it is customary for an artist of my stature to receive proper billing on the screen. And he said, uh... <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> he wants billing. <laughs> now I'm almost laughing because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Laugh or cry or wet the floor up. He's around, let me tell you. Your character was not in the pilot. I've already shot the pilot. Everyone is signed, sealed, and delivered. You have to be last. I said, oh. Uh, would you mind telling me who's in the, in the series? So he told me who, and I said, very, very nice people, I'm sure. But uh, I don't believe I would be comfortable in last position. What did he say? <laughs> he doesn't want to be last. Frank always cut it right down to the bone. Set him off. Well, he said, let me tell you, you go home and you think about it and you make a decision. You find out how to solve this problem and then you call me up, get out, I'm busy. I was determined to make an elegant exit. I didn't. I stumbled out of this room with a sigh of relief. I mean, I've never had such an experience in my life. Irwin hired me to play a deep, dark, snarling villain, and I hated that man. As I have always hated those deep, dark, snarling villains, I've played them but on stage and on the screen. But you were in the first... Yes, they are unredeemable. They are not palatable. And although I can do them very well, I don't like doing them. They're no fun. But then after that, you weren't so I much changed it. <laughs> I changed it. I changed it. I'm not He's a tough man, but not a stupid man. I knew that if I continued to play that Smith, which Gary Oldman does in this movie, and frankly not too acceptably because it's underwritten, I thought. They, they didn't do a good job for him. He's a, such a good actor. Uh, it was under development. So I began to sneak in my bits, hoping he wouldn't notice that. Uh, he noticed. <laughs> uh, so I, so I really suspected he would. But I wondered what he would do about all this. And one day he came to my dressing room, and the finger <laughs> and he said, I know what you're doing. And I decided to praise him up. And I said, and? He said, do more. <laughs> and he gave me, for the first and only time in a vast career, carte blanche. I never had it before or since to do anything I wanted. I wrote and rewrote every word you heard me say. I developed the relationship between me and the robot, which was pure heaven <laughs> than I thought. And so did the rest of the world, apparently. It was delicious. I figured it out, you see. I figured out that if I were, amongst other things, because I'm a character actor, I develop character, facets of character. That's what I do. And I do it quietly at home, and I plot, and I plan, who is this man? 
I was very carefully trained on stage, you see. And one of the things I decided was that he was a terrible coward. He was. Coward? I needed a protector. Billy Mooney was my protector, my hero. I made him the hero. And I hid behind him all the time. Remember? It worked. It was wonderful for Billy and divine for me. I was a terrible coward. Amongst other things. All of which were not happenstance, I promise you. I am not a happenstance actor. I think it out. I gave him facets of his nature, all of which I explored, and they all worked. So that I ended up being a disreputable, deceitful, sly, selfish, charming, delightful, delicious old fart. <laughs> <laughs> all of that I was, and, uh, and I did that. Characterization, yield. <laughs> and whatever they call it, who knows? The word campy. What does that mean? It means shit. It means outre. It means over and above. You bet over and above. Jack Nicholson is my actor. He goes sideways, as I do. I'm not suggesting that I'm as good an actor. He's divine. But he's a sideways actor. He doesn't go straight on. I don't go straight on. I go sideways to get there. So does Kevin Spacey, Mr. Carter. Not straight on, it's boring. He goes around there and gets this delicious to watch. It's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> Still got Billy was 11 years old. Probably, you know, his mind is, who knows his purpose. He's a very busy man, you know, he's involved in so many things. You realize the body of his work? When we did the fantasy world, which Kevin Burns did, I had no idea of the body of his work. I had no idea what he had done, how much he had done. Enormous body of work, going way, way back. I mean, he was a power in the industry. And of course, he was referred to as the master of disaster, which in fact he was. But those movies made a lot of money, uh, Tower Inferno and Poseidon Invention, uh, to which I was invited to the premiere. And I made the mistake of sitting on the aisle. And Irwin never sat down. He went dashing up and down the aisle. And each time he passed me, I said, not only is it a miracle, but I've done 612 television films, and none of it, none of this happened for any of it, except for Lost in Space. It's a miracle. You know, there are miracles still abounding. Why, who knows? But I've always felt that Somebody's watching over my, my work, which I've worked so hard to perfect, and I think I do it well. No matter what is written in newspapers, I've learned to deal with all that crap because I've understood that it's a personal opinion. I couldn't care less. Uh, there's the old showbiz adage, they can call me anything they want as long as they spell my name right and send me my name. <laughs> and that's what that's about, you see. Can't please everybody. Soon will be forgotten. All things change, sister.